being here. Uh, my name is Chad Edwards. I'm the Executive Vice President of Strategy, Planning, and Development here at Trinity Metro. Uh, and Phil Dupler, who will be doing the presentation here in a moment, he's on the planning team, uh, which is in my area. So uh, I just want to thank you guys for coming out tonight uh, and uh, listening to what we have to say about Trinity Metro and some of the um, the information that we, we have to share with you. Very quickly, before I bring Phil up, I just want to do a real quick safety message. Uh, safety is super important to us as a transit authority, making sure that we get people to and from their destinations as safe as possible uh, and, as, and, uh, and as quickly as possible. So if there's a, a problem here tonight, uh, somebody needs to call 911, either I'll do that or Wayne will do that, uh, who's in the back row here. Uh, if we need to uh, evacuate the building for, for some reason, we have two options. We have the exit over here to my left and your right. And then we have the stairs that you came up on um, in the middle of the, the, um, the station area there. So uh, just kind of give a sense of that. And then just follow either uh, Phil or I as far as, you know, if we need to get out or not. Uh, so we can um, gather over in the parking lot on the, on the far side there. So, so we have, uh, say that and say thanks for coming again and I'll turn it over to Phil. All right. Thank you, Chad. So my name is Phil Dupler. I'm Director of Planning here at Trinity Metro. I've been here for quite a number of years and seen a lot of changes happen. Uh, and what I'm going to do today is I'm going to uh, give you some background on our most recent major service change, our system-wide redesign that we called A Better Connection. And uh, I'm going to also share with you some of the results of that, uh, the ridership, how that's grown, and uh, some of what's, what has happened that's uh, done well, a couple of things that might not have been uh, as well as we had hoped. And then I'm going to conclude by uh, sharing with you how you can give us your feedback on what we need to change to make improvements for the future. So, uh, just about a year and a half ago, we implemented uh, what I, we called A Better Connection, or ABC for short. You know, uh, us government agencies are always trying to come up with uh, kind of cool little abbreviations for everything. And uh, so what we were trying to do there was completely redesign the system uh, for today's uh, situation in Fort Worth because, you know, the city had been growing for quite a number of years and we really hadn't done anything like this in uh, over 20. Since 1998 was really kind of the last major change. And so we uh, felt it was about time to do a, a system-wide redesign. And so we went through a, a long process taking about a little over a year. Uh, we actually started working on our plan actually before the COVID-19 pandemic had started. Uh, just internally as staff, we were meeting about it and, and talking about the, the future and, and what changes we might want to make. And then all of a sudden the COVID-19 pandemic uh, struck and uh, so we kind of had a little bit of a pause but then we realized that you know things had changed even more and so it was even more imperative to do some uh, some system redesign and so we took off again and uh, started working on our existing conditions examining what the system was doing uh, already uh, we were looking at goals and trade-offs. So if we do one thing over here, then it might have uh, effects throughout the system and might uh, change something in a way we don't want over there. And so we were evaluating all these different thoughts about what we were in a planning to do. And then at the same time, we started doing a round of public outreach at the very beginning. So we did some public outreach uh, at the beginning, and then we 
went back and took all of the input that we got and developed a number of alternatives. And at that point, we did a second round of public outreach where we presented three scenarios to the public. There was uh, three different scenarios. One was kind of just minor changes. A second one was uh, a series of much greater changes uh, where we would eliminate some rounds and put more resources towards some of our better performing rounds. And we called that, uh, came up, again, we come up with all these little slogans. We call that one, uh, walk more but wait less. And then we had a third scenario alternative, which was to uh, eliminate a, a whole bunch of rounds and implement uh, a new mode of service called mobility on demand. I'll talk a little bit more about that later on. But uh, what the public kind of seemed to gravitate towards in that second round was the, the middle one, uh, which was the, uh, the second one. And then, so we took that back, we developed a draft plan and then we came back out for a third round of public meetings and we got a bunch of feedback and some things people liked and some things people didn't like and so we went back and made some tweaks to that that uh, draft plan and then came up with a final plan which we pre presented to our board of directors uh, in may of uh, uh, 2021 and then they approved our changes which were implemented beginning in September of 21. And so what were some of those changes? So we resulted in seven new routes. There was 24 that got uh, modified and another uh, eight that just remained uh, completely unchanged. But a lot of the newer routes were more direct and uh, longer crosstown routes. Uh, resulted in fewer transfers for a lot of people, more one-seat rides, um, and then we added some additional Sunday and late night service as well, and expanded our zip zone coverage. Our zip zone, I'll talk to a little bit more later about. So, uh, <clears throat> now I'd like to share with you some of the, some of the results of what we uh, accomplished. So, this chart shows the ridership, uh, total ridership uh, as it had uh, by month from uh, just before the pandemic. And you can see that we we're at like 475,000 passengers per month. And then all of a sudden, then by April of 2020, the COVID-19 pandemic had happened and, and uh, all of a sudden, much of our ridership just evaporated almost overnight. And uh, so since that time, the ridership had been grow had started to grow again, but uh, not at a very fast clip. And so we asked uh, our consultant to evaluate, well, you know, how much of the changes that, how much of the ridership that we had uh, gained since the COVID-19 and our service changes in September of 21, how much of that is attributable to the just recovery from the pandemic and how much of that is attributable to the changes that we made. And they studied the trends in other transportation modes and uh, what other transit agencies around the country had been experiencing they determined that it was about 70% of what we had gotten back was from the our changes and 30% of it was just sort of the natural recovery from COVID. So this graph shows the red line is from where we implemented our changes and have grown since. And the dotted line below it is a projection of where we would be if we had not made those changes. But the interesting thing is that, you know, even after all of that, fixed route bus is still down about 25% from 
from 2019. So we still have not gotten back all of the riders that we had before the COVID-19 pandemic. So we've looked at some route level analysis and I think it was important to, uh, to include that uh, we have kind of a wide variety of routes and some carry a lot of ridership, some don't carry very much. And this graph ranks all of our routes by the amount of ridership that they have per weekday, starting with our Route 89, the Spur, which is our most popular route, all the way down to our uh, Burnett Lunch Line, which is the smallest. And as you can see here, that an awful lot of our ridership is just on those first, those top five routes. So interestingly, that our top five routes carry over 50% of our ridership, where uh, our bottom 17 routes carry less than 10%. And this is kind of the classic uh, conundrum that transit agencies across the country are, are dealing with when they're looking at changes is, do we double down on our most productive routes and throw all of our resources towards the, the most productive routes and add frequency to those because we know frequency drives ridership or do we scatter all of our, our resources around the city and try to provide coverage with lots of small routes. And so that's where we're trying to find this balance is between those two options. So another way to look at it is uh, a pie chart. So this just shows the slices of the pie that each of our individual rounds takes up. And you can see that the top five are, the, are uh, 50 percent. That's routes one, two, five, six, and the spur. All of those except route five are 15 minute frequency routes. So we ask ourselves, well, does that mean we should add 15 minute frequency to route five as well? And then our bottom 17 routes, that's 10%. And then uh, even within that, there's 10 routes that carry less than 100 people per uh, weekday. So those 10 routes that carry the smallest amount those include our express routes, which, as you can imagine, they only operate mornings and evenings. So we expect those are not going to carry much. I mentioned our lunchtime trolley and our, uh, we have AM, PM commuter routes like uh, Route 30 in the center port. You know, those we expect are not going to carry a lot. We have our Route 66, though. We actually changed Route 66 to go Instead of on I-35, it's now traveling Chisholm Trail because it's a faster way to get to downtown. But it still uh, has, uh, it's been flat ever since the change. Our Express Route 63, uh, that was kind of a win. We didn't really even make any changes to it, but it's, the ridership's actually up by almost 50% since COVID. Uh, routes 23 and 28, are also small routes, less than 100 a day, and their performance has just been flat since the changes. Uh, and routes 33 and 45 are brand new routes, and they still carry about the same number of passengers per day as they did when they started. So we've had some wins, we've had some disappointments. Route 4. We made changes to that. We terminated in the Medical District near the side of our future text rail station. So Baylor, that's gonna be right behind Baylor Hospital. So the thought was, we're building this new station. We need 15 minute service between the station and the JPS Hospital. So that would be the way we'd, we'd make that connection. And we use that savings from not going downtown to increase the frequency to 15 minutes. Uh, but again, the ridership on Route 4 is still uh, down considerably from pre-COVID. One of our wins, though, is our Route 5. We extended Route 5 all the way to TCC South Campus and the uh, VA clinic. 
And that came straight from public feedback, a meeting like this, where some people said, this is what we think you ought to do. So we actually made that change, and it's done really well. Ridership's actually up on Route 5 since before COVID. But probably our biggest wins have been in our zip zone category. So we've actually had some zip zones. We had mercantile and the, the south side zip zone uh, before COVID, but then uh, when the COVID hit, you can see that line with the little uh, circles on it at the very bottom shows the uh, 2020 and uh, it was pretty much flat. We, it really didn't, the COVID really didn't change our ridership on the, on the zip zones for much at all. And it remained flat throughout COVID, but then uh, starting uh, in about March of uh, 21, we made our first big expansion of the south side zip zone. And you can see from March 21, it just started to grow and grow and grow and then we had our ABC uh, started our A Better Connection. We didn't really make any changes to the uh, zip zones at that time, but uh, you can see that uh, it kind of remained flat until that first expansion. And then uh, we added uh, the southeast zip zone in uh, about June of uh, uh, 22 and you know from that point on the zip zones just has taken off so the zip zones have been very popular and uh, so you know that's one of the things that we're looking at is you know possibly do we want to expand more on the zip zones because what we find is a lot of transit agencies around the country are doing zip zones or they don't all call them zip zones that's our term for it but they do what we call mobility on demand and it seems to be popular and it's a, a less costly way to provide coverage than running lots of small fixed routes. So we don't have any particular uh, recommendations right now for changes coming up. We're kind of at the early stages of uh, doing an analysis and getting public feedback. So that's what we're wanting from you tonight is to, to get your, your feedback. What do you like about the changes that we made? What did you not like? What didn't work out for you very well? And what would make you want to ride transit even more? And so some of the kinds of uh, feedback we're looking for is are there particular bus stop locations that you think we should add or particular amenities that should be added, uh, frequency changes to the routes that you ride that would help you out the most, uh, extensions to different locations that you would ride to, uh, span of service, that means time of day, does it work out for you when you need to travel early, late, weekends, that sort of thing. Or are there new zip zone service areas? Because we've already heard from a number of people that they want zip zone in their neighborhoods, and particularly like East Fort Worth. And so that's the kind of thing we're looking for tonight and going on into the next uh, uh, few months is to get feedback from the public. And uh, we put out a survey. So we would hope that you would fill out our survey online get to it on your phone through this uh, QR code, or there's the, uh, the link to it below. And we will also welcome any other comments that you might have. And uh, here are a number of ways that you can respond. Of course, you're all here tonight, so we'd like to hear from you. But if you want to you know, ask your friends to, to join in and put in their input, or if you don't have time tonight and you just want to send us a letter or an email, you can send it to tmweb at uh, ridetm.org or you could write to Trinity Metro at 801 Grove Street, Fort Worth, Texas 76102 
attention to the planning department. That gets it to us a little bit faster. Or you can call our Training Metro's comment line. We have a, a phone number set up, 817-215-8793 that you can call and uh, leave a recorded message. And with that, that's uh, all I have for you. And uh, at this point, I'm just gonna open up the floor to any questions or comments that you, that the public may have. Yes, sir. Is, uh, you say that zip code is more fish, uh, cost fish. And mm -hmm. I never wrote it, but is it just a one day bus ticket you gotta have? Right. So the zip zones are right now they just work on the same uh, same fare as the regular bus. But you gotta be in the zone. You have to be within the zone to travel within the zone. Yes, they they are geographically limited right now. We have and we have five zones, uh, but you can travel within that zone. You can connect to a bus and travel across town and then get on another zip zone at the other end, all on the can same you connect ticket. With another zip zone? Yes, you can even do that. We have quite a few people that, that do that. <laughs> we did a survey and saw quite a number of people jumping from one zip zone directly to another. So you, while you're riding that, that van or that, in that zip zone, while you're riding, you can call for the other zip zone to meet you there before you get there? Uh, I don't, I'm not sure, but I've got an expert right in the house. Uh, Ralph Zaragoza is our zip zone manager, so I'm going to ask him to, to step in. And yes, so Phil mentioned, yeah, you could make a connection from a zip zone to zip zone. Well, the one thing, you got to call customer Yeah, so, for zip zone? yeah, so there's a couple ways to do this. You could, you could call uh, to book your trip. And then they'll, our customer service will, you know, uh, get the service for you. And then we also have an app that you can download, and you can book a trip that way. So, if people are familiar with like Uber and Lyft, uh, it works very similar, where um, you know everything it's it's an on-demand service. What we call is that just costs five dollar all-day bus ticket. Yeah, you can buy a five dollar day pass, you and then it's, it covers the all. Ticket? Yeah, you would show the the driver. Your, your ticket, and then you, you get on. So th that $5 day pass, you could do a zip zone, and then you could do a transfer to a bus, or even a rail, it's unlimited ride, so they'll, they'll take you, um, you know, for, for that $5 day pass, they'll, they'll take you a long way. And uh, how's the best way to see the map of the zip zone? Yeah, we have a, um, on our website, we have a, a system map, uh, we have some downstairs in the um, in the lobby area you where you'll see a, a zip zone um, well, where these zip zones are located. So you know the closest one here is our, our near south side uh, zip zone, but there's one in Mercantile where our tax rail stations are located. We have one in the southeast uh, that covers Forest Hill. That's something that we expanded recently as of November 1st. And then we also have the South Terrence, so south of uh, I-20. Crowley and Everman, that area, um, that's also a zip zone. And then Alliance is the, the fifth one up in the Alliance area by the airport and the Texas Motor Speedway. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's a doctor's office. I, I went in, I was riding a bike three miles, I went in a bar, gave a guy two bucks, and he drove me the rest six miles. I kind of steer my bike back, but, but I think there's a zip zone there. Yeah, do you know the cross streets? Well, there's uh, I-35 that goes north of 820 yeah. towards the line, but it's a mile past yeah, it's 820 a, Junction. Probably Mercantile. So two miles past 820 Junction. Then it, it's in Fort Worth to the, to the west about two miles. Mm -hmm. It's in Fort Worth, but right on the, about, a, about two blocks, it's, it's Saginaw, you know? Yeah, but it's, so it's, yeah, yeah, Zip Zone doesn't cover Saginaw, but the area that you're talking about, that's like our mercantile zone. 
So it's it's possible that you are in that zip zone so that boundary. Zip zone driver you would take. Yeah, these are the black van. I'm sure you've seen the black minivans yeah. that's going out there. Yeah, so that's that's what they are. Yeah, that was a good idea. Good choice. Oh yes. Yeah, I did a whole lot of walking. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's, 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 you have a, this is the link to the zip zone. <laughs> no, this is linked to the survey. Yes. Uh, what's the yes. Yeah. Uh, well, have that on the, on the, the Metro website. Just go to the Trinity Metro website. Yeah. And Sarah has the map that shows it. Yeah. Oh, there's a yeah. map right there. All right. Excellent. All right. Teamwork. Okay. What are the hours of our operation? Uh, so, so for a mercantile, it's from 5.30 a.m. To 9 p.m. Monday to Friday. We have Southside um, from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Sunday to Wednesday, and then from Thursday to Saturday is from 6 a.m. to midnight. Southeast is 7 a.m. to 7 p. Monday to Friday, and then South Terrence is 7 a. to 7 p. Monday to Friday. So, can we get a gentleman the map? What maps? Yeah, because oh, we have the zip zone hours on there. Uh, the hours oh, you know? are online. Oh, the hours are online. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else? If you click on each zip zone separately, yep. and it tells you everything you need to know plus hours. When you get on the end of the beach bus way north, the end of the trail, they have a zip zone that takes the other mile to the right side. That's right. Yeah, so we did an expansion back to yeah. over there. Did the expansion. Yep. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. So you can actually take advantage. Do you have any other questions? I don't know. I do. Tweaking. I do. Services on the north side of the. Um, not. I would say not in the near future, but like like we discussed a little bit before the meeting. Um, kind of targeting next fall for some service changes, and we would. Definitely welcome some changes to the north side because of some of the issues that we've talked about. So, mm -hmm. so we were talking about it before the rest of y'all came in. Um, we were talking, he was here about an hour and we had a chance to talk. And so we talked about some of the issues with Route 45 not connecting and uh, well, and the, the trying to go to Walmart. Trying to remember all the places. Walmart, GPS, 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 GPS,
get to Walmart. Yeah, and not even went straight down to Yeah, Jack Yeah, and that's one of the things we've heard from people. people. The handicapped people yeah. on Long Avenue, West Long Avenue. Yeah. You have a bus that goes east on 28 in Ephraim, but you don't have a bus service going west on Long Avenue to Ephraim. And most people are trying to get to JPS Diamond Hill Clinic. The Route 12 is not as frequently as the, the old Route 90 bus that yeah. got there. Uh, and also uh, a little bit more bus service up and down uh, Ephraim. Uh, you don't have no bus stops there. Yes. No signage. No days are all the way to to past name. Yes. Long yeah. stretch um, without no stops. Yeah, we're we're working on that right now. We're trying to get some stops. We have a contract with the city to install stops to the ports. Trying to work through those issues. But yeah, we're going to work on getting some stops along with that center. When you call customer service to tell them the 100 block where to put a bus stop, and they said they fill it out months later that there ain't no bus stop, what's going on? Well, he's talking about entering. He's right, right in front of the Auto zone, they need a bus stop and one directly across the street because they got no bus stop in front of the shopping center. And the other thing that from the auto zone on Entra, the, the other the other thing is you know, to do uh, who do we complain to about getting signs out there when like if a car wreck or something knocks the sign down and <coughs> The bus driver knows that that stop sign is there, but they're about past that. You know, mm -hmm. who do we call to get a sign, a temporary sign put out there until the permanent sign is put? Yeah, I mean, all I can tell is tell you is call our customer service department. And they'll put it in, but we do have a system where they put in tickets for knock down. The other thing that I my complaint is when are y'all going to overhaul the call center? That's the biggest complaint that I have because I tried to call uh, to get access service for my kid brother, and it takes forever and a day to get to it. Or to complain or about bus service or anything, it takes forever and a day to it. Are you talking about um, response time on getting somebody on the phone? On the phone. Okay. So, uh, when was the last time y'all had the system overhaul? So we, at the last couple of board meetings that we've had, um, our our VP of customer engagement has talked about that she's in charge of the, of the call center and has has shared with the board that she understands that there's been long wait times and is trying to reduce those times. And so it's in process right now, but it's good to hear that there's still some issues there so that we can continue to make improvements on that. So we're, we're taking those notes down uh, so we can share that with her. So, yeah, I appreciate your comment on that. Can I ask a follow-up? Is, is it getting through the prompts or once you get through the prompts waiting on hold? Well, the whole system is junk. Okay, okay. okay. I, it's like, your system is not the only system I have to complain about. I also have to complain about JPS system when I'm trying to call them. Same thing. It takes forever to take to, to get what we're trying to get to. All right. So, so what yeah. you're talking about is scheduling for access to, did I hear you say that correctly? Yeah. Yeah. So what I will tell you is we are trying to look at a new system totally, revamping access. And what, what if that happens, it'll start probably in June and, and but you know, we'll, we'll go out and do training but it'll allow you to book online well, that's my problem so I, I, I don't have a computer system or anything I'm still doing it the analog yeah. way. but here, here's the good news some people will and they'll take people off the phones to help you with getting through but thank you for telling us about it because we do understand that it needs to be improved was that during the month of November you were trying to call and 
for access. Yeah. Okay. So, as you know, month of November was the, our free fair month, and um, well, we were slammed was, with. Yeah. Yeah. Also, this was hot, like also in October too. Okay. October. Okay. okay. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Uh, this, uh, are y'all planning on taking away the 45 or improving the 45? We don't have a we don't have a, a set plan right now. Right now, we're just trying to gather the public feedback and determine you know what does the community want out there. So, <laughs> so we're looking like I mentioned, we're looking at making changes to the system again in the fall, but I don't have a set. I don't have a set schedule of, of different improvements that we're going to do just yet. So we're just looking for kind of that initial feedback. So what are your thoughts? Would you keep the 45 and make some of the changes like uh, 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 the suggestions going to the... Yes, there's definitely got to be some suggestions because 45 are going to the cameras on the hill, Hazel, um, everything. Needs to go to Walmart, McDonald's, you know, uh, JPS. Mm -hmm. I think there's even a uh, clinic on, uh, on Beverly Hills and uh, Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. and it don't go there either. Yeah. I mean, up in the map, they don't have I mean, we're looking at all options. I mean, I think we should get to see one. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> or? It's just a horseshoe because of all the rivers. There's a horseshoe like in the end of the route. It's two miles over there. The other end of the route. You really don't see nothing like it. 11, 12 miles of like a yeah. So I think we understand that Route 45 is not, not it very goes popular. Back to I mean, that's the same like North North South South period. I mean, there's not enough buses to, to take you anywhere anymore. Like you said, there was a 90 that ran up and down long and, uh, that took you from, where did it take you? From JPS, from JPS, to yeah. all, all the way down to the uh, yeah, to the uh, it was, it was, yeah, you just go across town. And so then, right. I mean, uh, the people didn't want to go to Walmart, but they can go to the other grocery stores that's in that area over there. Yeah. I mean, we we got across town. We, we're we're not in a, a desert zone, food desert zone over there, but people still would like to go to different stores in that area. I, I remember when I could catch that 90. Test 46. Go to Lakewood, do what I need to do out there, come back and catch the 90, and be home within an hour. Yeah. But now it takes forever a day for me to get somewhere. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, 55 bus. Uh -huh. uh, I live in uh, group home. Uh -huh. And most of the guys there are either with a walker or a wheelchair. And a lot of them have to go out to the parole office on Carey Street. Okay, yeah. To get the 55 bus to go down there, you've got to walk almost a half an hour one way or about three quarters an hour the other way to get to the bus stop. So, where is this? Uh, at the corner of well, where I live, is right there at the corner of uh, Village Creek and, and Barry Street. Oh, Village Creek and Barry Street. Yeah. Okay. All right. And like I said, if you catch that bus, you gotta go up this way, or you gotta go down way down that way. Yeah. Okay. And it's it's, it's a kind of a hefty distance for these people in wheelchairs or walkers. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and even me with the cane. No, I'm trying to I'm trying to picture it in my head, but uh, but we're we're taking notes and um, look into that. So you're saying we'd like to get a uh, stop right there by Robertson where the bus sits. Okay. By Robertson where the bus. Comes. Yeah, Robertson is within the block. The bus turns left on uh, Village Creek or cuts off Village Creek and turns right on Mary Street. Yeah, okay. Town picture. Okay. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you.
No, he's talking to Sam. Comments or input? So, Phil, I just want to add very quickly. So, thanks, thanks for all your comments tonight. You know, you've, you've had people writing those down uh, so that we can get you your comments. We appreciate you writing those down for us. Um, so, <laughs> well, just, just remember these are all comments. We've got to take all these comments and kind of work it into the system overall. Um, we're not going to make any changes without having other public meetings, okay? So you're not going to just see something change all of a sudden. So as you were talking earlier and asking about the 45, is it still saying the way it is today? Yes. As as Phil said, that that change won't happen until maybe fall of next year, okay? So uh, it gives some time, right, for everybody to continue to think of some improvements and what might what what we might like to see right as improvements for the system does that include bus, new bus stops no the bus stops we can do a lot faster uh, the routes themselves if we have to change or move or anything like that those take longer to do we have to go through a public involvement process right. um, the bus stops we don't have to do that so um, we'll take a look at, at you know the, the the list that we currently have on where improvements and bus stops need to be added and see if we can't do something with that. Make yeah. sure you don't put them in alley in a couple of years. That's right. Because when they had the old Route 90, every bus stop was in an alley. Okay, yeah, that's a great uh, reminder for us on that. Um, but I just want to assure you guys that we'll have other public meetings in the future that you can attend and hopefully you'll be able to hear some of the comments you've had here. You'll be able to see those on the screen ultimately um, as we're working through the, the update and the refinement of the system. So, thank you guys for, for attending. Yeah, bring your own beverage. Yeah, you can bring your own beverage <laughs> again. <laughs> all right, anything else? Yes, so, all right, thank you guys for attending. We appreciate it. I thank Mr. Kessler.